Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the Electrophysiology Lectures. Today we are studying about the basics of the electroretinography that is the ERG. In this video and the subsequent one, we shall be studying about what is electroretinography, understanding the physiology of the electroretinography, how do we perform the electroretinography, the normal waveforms which are present in ERG, the protocols, specifically the ISCEV protocols and the abnormal ERG patterns. So first of all, let us try to have a basic orientation towards the electrophysiology, specifically the electroretinogram. We should have an idea regarding the orientation of the cells in the retina. If you're not very familiar with the layers of the retina, I would advise you to visit my video on layers of retina present on the channel. So basically we know that we have photoreceptors which are connected to the bipolar cells and bipolar cells finally sending the impulses to the ganglion cells. So that is a very simplified uh, pathway of transmission of electric impulses from the photoreceptors to the ganglion cells. Now these three cells, basically the photoreceptors, the bipolar cells and the ganglion cells, they are actually radially oriented. Okay, so they are radially oriented. Apart from that, we also have some cells which are horizontally um, oriented or horizontally connecting and these cells are the emocrine cells and the horizontal cells, okay, which are labeled as A and H over here. Now, for the purpose of electrophysiology or electroethnography, you should understand that it is basically the radial cell which will contribute to that majority chunk of the electrical response which is coming out from the retina. So, as you can see the direction of the arrows, the electrical response is beginning in the photoreceptor, then it's going to the bipolar cells and then it's going to the ganglion cells. So that is very important. And as this electric response travels from the photoreceptor to the ganglion cells, okay, as it travels from the outer retina to the inner retina, okay, it will lead to a formation of a electrical response. And if you're going to chart that electrical response, you will get such a waveform. And that waveform is called electroretinograph. And if you are doing this test, it is called electroretinography. Okay, so basically ERG is an electrophysiological test which measures the electrical response of various cell types in the retina. So you can measure the responses of various cell types. You can measure the response at the photoreceptor level that is the rods and cones. You can measure the functionality of the inner retinal cells that is your bipolar cells and the emocrine cells and also the ganglion cell. So basically what is happening is that suppose you show a patient a flash of light when a flash of light is projected onto the eye or onto the retina it basically leads to the generation of electrical responses and this electrical response you know it originates from the photoreceptor cells goes to the bipolar and then goes to the ganglion cells so obviously it is the radial cells which are um, showing a lot of electrical response obviously the horizontal cells will also have a contributory role and apart from that even there will be changes in the ionic composition the extracellular potassium levels and that is finally uh, going to lead to development of electrical response so when you measure that electrical response of the retina using an electrode that you have placed probably on the cornea or on the conjunctiva what you are doing is an electrode retinography okay so i hope that is clear so measurement of the electrical response of the eye which is induced by a flash of light okay so there are various ways in which you actually give the stimulus to the patient okay so that we shall be studying about how when in the next video probably when i'll be talking to you in detail as to how you go about doing an electroretinography so as you uh, give a flash of light to the eye, there will be an electrical response that will result in a waveform generation and that waveform is basically a biphasic waveform. Now why is that uh, waveform called biphasic? I'll tell you in a while. So and that biphasic waveform we are going to record and for recording of that waveform what do you need? You need an electrode right and therefore this entire process is called electroretinography okay yeah now there are various types of electroretinography you can actually divide them based on various parameters so in general what we are doing is 
an electroretinography of the entire retina. So you give a, a bright source of light to the patient and in turn you are getting a waveform which is coming as a cumulative waveform from the entire retina. That means all the photoreceptors of the retina are going to get stimulated, not just the uh, rods and cones present in the macula. No, it is the entire photoreceptors of the retina which get stimulated, right? So based on the zone of stimulus, again, you can divide the ERG into various types. So you have a full field ERG, which I was talking about, in which the entire retina gets stimulated. And this is the normal uh, or the most common ERG that we basically use. Then you can do ERG at a certain point that is called a focal ERG. And then there's also an ERG called the multifocal ERG. Okay. Then based upon the type of stimulus, okay, what type of stimulus are you giving to the patient? for him or her to generate a response again erg can be a single flash erg in which you give just a single flash okay or it could be a flicker ER, uh, erg or a flicker flash in which your flashlight is actually flickering then you can have a red flash erg a blue filter flash erg or a, in a pattern erg in which instead of a flash you actually give the patient uh, a pattern to look at and that pattern actually uh, lightens up at various points at a regular interval okay so that is called a pattern erg now based upon the state of adaption of the eye whether you are carrying out the test in dark and the dark and the eye is adapted to the dark that is called a dark adapted erg also called a scotopic erg Okay, if the test is carried out in the presence of light and the eye is uh, light adapted, that is called a photopic ERG. Then we have a mesopic ERG. Now, mesopic vision is also called a twilight vision. Okay, so it's basically a combination of photopic and scotopic vision, but and the light which is used is basically a low light, right? So, an ERG carried in mesopic condition is called a mesopic ERG. So, summarizing that. Uh, physiology of ERG so basically you are throwing a light on retina or you're giving a stimulus that stimulus could be a red flash a full flash a flicker flash a pattern anything like that and that is going to cause changes at the level of the photoreceptors leads to photoisomerization of the rhodopsin and that you as a um, if we if you would remember the rhodopsin cycle or the visual cycle it causes hyperpolarization of the photoreceptors now as the photoreceptors get hyperpolarized there will be an electrical response that electrical response is going to go to the bipolar cells from the bipolar cells it goes to the ganglion cells and then to the optic nerve and to the brain and that is how we basically visualize something throughout this process an electrical response is generated and that is actually depicted in the form of a waveform and when we study this waveform, we are doing an ERG, okay? So, this is how a normal waveform of an ERG looks like, right? Now, in this diagram, I have actually labeled all the waveforms. But let me tell you that based on the type of test that you are doing, based on the protocol of ERG that you are using, okay? And based on the state of the eye, whether it is dark adapted or light adapted, you might see different waveforms and you might see different shapes of the waveform. You might see different number of waveforms, okay? So it's not necessary that you will see C wave, D wave all the time. And uh, to tell you actually C wave and D waves are actually very rare. And all you see is an A wave and a B wave. And on top of the B wave, you might see these uh, zigzag like lines, which are the oscillatory potentials, okay? So for the purpose of simplicity, an ERG for most of the time has two waves, an A wave or a B and a B wave. And since there are two waves, this is called a biphasic waveform. Okay, so it's called a biphasic waveform. So I hope that is clear to you. Now, as you can see, the A wave is basically a negative wave okay here and this a wave is actually coming from the photoreceptors it is come from the rods and the cones and then you have a positive wave that goes up and that wave is called the b wave 
right and b wave comes from the bipolar cells and the muller cells so you can remember that the b wave uh, b wave and bipolar cells bipolar also has a b in it so b wave comes from the bipolar cells okay then you have the c wave and the d waves and then you have the oscillatory potential the oscillatory potentials are these you know wave small small wavelets which are actually superimposed on the ascending limb of the b wave so you have this b wave on the ascending limb of the b wave you have this oscillatory potentials and they come from your amacrine cells okay now why is the a wave negative the a wave is negative or like a trough because it is a hyperpolarization wave a b wave is a positive wave because it is a depolarization wave okay now as i was talking about the c wave and a d wave now you don't uh, really see these c waves and d waves all the time so first let us talk about the c wave the c wave is not very practical you don't really see it all the time it actually arises due to the changes in the ionic status in the subretinal space the subretinal space the space which is between the rp and the neurosensory retina so we say that the c wave is actually coming from the retinal pigment epithelia okay and usually it is a positive wave which comes because of the reduced subretinal k uh, potassium ions okay in response to the light stimulus similarly you have a d wave d wave is smaller than the c wave and it is also a positive wave it occurs basically in the photopic erg and the source comes from the off bipolar cells okay so uh, you can just remember that c wave comes from rp and d wave comes from the bipolar cells and specifically it is the off bipolar cells however we usually do not interpret the c a c and d waves what about the oscillatory potentials definitely these are very important as you can see they are uh, they are small tiny wavelets which are present on the ascending limb of the b wave and these are high frequency high frequency means they are coming quite quickly okay so they are high frequency but their amplitude is low okay and they are small waves therefore they are called wavelets okay so they are high frequency low amplitude wavelets superimposed or riding on the ascending limb of the b wave and from where are they coming they are coming from the amacrine cells and uh, also from the ganglion cells so basically if someone asks you the oscillatory potential tells you about the status of the inner retina okay and if you would remember the electrical response generation starts from the outer retina that is from the photoreceptors therefore the first wave that you see is the a wave that is coming from the photoreceptors and then eventually it goes towards the inner retina and therefore the bipolar cells and the ganglion cells participate so you get a b wave and b wave is coming from the bipolar cells in between you have the amacrine cells which are actually uh, causing the development of oscillatory potential on top of the b wave okay so that is how you remember and the importance of oscillatory potential is that they actually tell you regarding the uh, perfusion status of the inner retina so sometimes uh, there might be absence or reduction in the oscillatory potential and that indicates that there is some sort of ischemic uh, changes which are occurring at the inner retina so now let us talk about the amplitudes and the implicit times okay so now what is meant by the amplitudes of the wave now here we are going to talk about the a wave amplitude and the b wave amplitude you can see that the waves are actually deflected okay the a wave is a negative deflection or a negative wave and the b wave is a positive deflection right now here if you can see carefully this is basically your baseline right so the maximum amount of uh, the deflection of the a wave from the baseline is called the trough right so if you measure the voltage of the a wave or the power of the a wave from the baseline to the trough that is called a, a wave amplitude okay so it is measured from the baseline to the trough however the b wave amplitude is always going to be measured from the trough of the a wave and then goes up to the peak of the b wave okay the maximum positive deflection of the b wave is the peak okay the maximum negative deflection of the a wave is called the trough so for the a wave amplitude you have to measure from the baseline to the trough and for the b wave amplitude you have to measure from the trough to the peak of the b wave so i hope that is clear to you now what is meant by the latency or the latent time latency or latent time is basically the time that a wave takes to initiate starting from the point of stimulation right so if you start giving the stimulus over here 
okay the time taken by the a wave which is the a wave is starting basically here so the time which is taken by the a wave from the point of stimulus is called the a wave latency now at this point i want you to be very clear that when you have these erg graphs or waveform at x axis basically you have time okay and at the y axis you have the amplitudes which are basically in micro volts okay so i hope that should be clear so whenever suppose here you are giving the stimulus the a wave will not start here it will start after some time so that time that latent period or that lag period is called the latency or the latent time of the a wave okay now the b wave again will start here so the time period between the uh, between the giving uh, of the stimulus and the beginning of the b wave is called the b wave latency or the latent time of the b wave so i hope that is clear what about the implicit time the time which is taken from the flash onset or the stimulus onset to reach the peak of each wave is called the implicit time okay now the peak of a wave means we are basically talking about the trough of the a wave that is the maximum deflection of the a wave so from the point of initiation okay to that trough is called the implicit time of the a wave okay i hope that is clear now the time taken again from the beginning of the flash onset to the peak of the b wave which is marked here in green color is called the implicit time of the b wave so i hope that is clear so that's all for this video coming next on inside of thermology in the next video on erg we shall be discussing about how do we do erg okay what are the iscev protocols and we shall also be studying some of the abnormal erg pattern so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed it thank you and have a nice day